Hello, this is Mr. Jern, and I am going to talk a little bit about activity 2.1.2, the beam deflection distance learning version for Project Lead the Way Principles of Engineering. Um, and this follows after we talked about the beam deflection and modulus of elasticity and, and all that stuff like that. So you're going to need to remember that stuff. Um, in fact, it's mentioned here. But uh, just so you know, the goals are listed right here. Uh, beam deflection related to beam length, the cross-sectional geometry, meaning like which way it's oriented, and the material's property, the, the properties of the material itself. Um, you're going to interact with some content-specific modules and simulations, and you're going to use some modeling to s simulate um, some natural phenomena because this is the distance learning version. So... A little bit of an introduction, make sure you read through that, familiarize yourself with that. This is all, of course, after you set up your engineering notebook for this activity. So scrolling down, you're going to, here's, here's some of the equipment you're going to, equipment you're going to be using. Uh, resources, this is going to be the uh, PowerPoint that we went through. Uh, this is a, a little uh, module for uh, part later on in, the, um, in this activity. Uh, here is going to be a beam deflection data file. You don't have to click any of these right now. These are just all kind of all the links that are coming up. Okay. Honestly, you don't need to worry about ver installing vernier graphical analysis. You've already used it many times. It's probably already installed on your computer. Uh, if you have trouble with that, this this probably won't work for you. This this guide here. So talk to me if you still need to install it. If you have any trouble with that. Okay. Down to the procedure. You're going to look at a beam's deflection and several beam characteristics, how it's positioned, its length, and the materials that it's composed of. So let's start with section one. Now in your engineering notebook, you'll hopefully have written down some of these, uh, just a brief introduction. You don't have to copy this or anything like that, but summarize it. Uh, and then you get into the procedure. So make sure you write like procedures. And then there's several steps involved here. So step one, going back, you're going to be investigating a simple beam. Okay, uh, literally in class, if we were doing this, it would be a uh, two by four that is stretched off, uh, stretched across a distance and you'd be standing on it and measuring the distance that, uh, or the, the deflection that the beam, um, how much the beam deflected or bent, if you will. So again, make sure you're familiar with uh, moment of inertia, modulus of elasticity, and how to calculate the deflection of a simply supported beam. Now this is going to be going. We're going to be going into this again in this activity. So uh, just this is where it's all coming from. This is that PowerPoint that we went through already. So step one: determining the modulus of elasticity. Okay. So here is a beam. It talks about how to do this. It's set uh, flat on some bricks, and it tells you the beam height, the beam width, and the length it's support, the, the length that it's uh, between supports, okay, how far it is. And it's all in inches. So you have the height, the, the, the base, the width, and the length. So how do you calculate moment? So step two, so kind of summarize that, draw it says, just do what it says here, okay, draw it, sketch it, all that stuff. And then step two, calculate the moment of inertia for this beam in inches to the fourth, okay? So how do you do that? Well, um, you go back and you look at the uh, formula for moment of inertia and you will find it. It's fairly straightforward. Okay, uh, so here's some additional information. You can watch this, um, look at this information right here. That should be helpful to you. Step three, so write down three. Uh, watch, you're gonna watch, this, this is summary, so it, it's gonna explain it and then you're gonna do it. It's gonna like show you. So you're gonna watch this video of a deflection of a beam, okay, deflection test. During this test, you're going to see a downward force applied to this beam at the mid span. So it's talking about this right here in this in this video, and uh, it's just connected by a little small metal plate and some bolts and stuff like that. You're going to see some chains pull, chains pulling on it. There is a data file attached to this. Okay, so when you open up the data file, it says you want to you're going to want to close. Make sure graphical analysis is closed completely before clicking on the data file, and I have found that to be true. It just works if you click on this, and you just open it and it should just open right up okay so here is the video so we watch the video do, do, do. Um, how long it lasts 47 seconds so you can see it's being slowly deflected you can see that the, there's a force pulling downward on it you can see the the red line is the baseline you can see how far it's deflected 
Okay. Now all this information is going to be in this data file. So how far it's deflected is something that you could measure in real life, or in this case, you'll you'll see the displacement of it uh, or deflection of it. Okay. So then they're going to let it let it go. You can see like you're going to see when they let it go, it's kind of cracked, and we're not interested in the data uh, after the beam cracks because I mean you don't want a bridge to be breaking and technically working because that's not how you want it to be. You want the you want any beams to not break. Okay, you can see the crack right there. So we, when we look at the data file, we're going to focus on the part where it didn't break. All right, it's going to talk about that right now. So what we're going to do is calculate the modulus of elasticity of the beam using the values in the data file. Okay, uh, you're going to show your work. So what you're going to do is choose a data point from the linear region of the data. Okay, I'm going to show you actually, you know, just click over there right now. So here's uh, the data file that you're going to download. And you can see there's this whole linear part. It's kind of highlighted by this um, well, line right here. And then it starts to bend. This curve here indicates that the beam is giving way. It's breaking. And we're not interested in that part because, like I said, we don't want our bridges and support structures and whatever to break. Okay, and here's where, I mean, so basically they're applying a certain amount of force and it's being displaced more and more and more so it's cracking and so it, it takes less and less force to actually it's what's going on here it takes less and less force to to bend the beam the same amount so or to bend the beam it takes less and less force to bend the beam and eventually it just keeps bending even with less and less force okay so this is how far it bends anyway Point is, you're going to want to focus on this straight line part. And when you open it, it should already be highlighted for you. It's great like that. So all you got to do is pick a spot in there. It's going to tell you how many, how much force there is in Newtons, 50, in this case, 51.4. Just, I just randomly clicked. And it'll tell you how far the beam deflected in millimeters, in this case, 3.516. Okay, you can click anywhere in the linear part. It's fine. Okay, maybe not at the very beginning, though. Maybe just kind of like click somewhere near the end before it starts to curve. Okay, so in this example, that's what this is talking about. That's what this linear uh, region is in this example. Okay, the wood is flexing, but not cracking, breaking, or being permanently damaged. So that's what we want. It tells you how many newtons is. Now this is just, this is just an example. The thing I was just showing you is the actual data file. So you want to use data from that. One thing you'll notice is that that data file is, is in, uh, in metric. It tells you the force in newtons and it tells you the displacement i think it was in millimeters so what you want to do is convert that um, into uh, the u.s customary units and there's ways to do it and it tells you how you can click on this link but my preferred method is say um, a siri how many pounds is 50 newtons and then if it wasn't in silence it would have told me how many pounds is 50 newtons? 50 newtons is equivalent to about 11.2 pounds force. So that's what I would just do is, is either Google it or ask, ask your phone or something like that. Google is pretty helpful for that. So, I mean, if you want to do the unit conversion by hand, please, by all means, be my guest. Um, now, once you do the unit conversion, you're, gonna ch you're changing newtons into pounds and you're changing millimeters into feet. Okay, um, sorry, inches, holy cow inches okay because you want to make sure it's in line with the same units that you use sorry i scrolled up up here you want all the units to be the same so scrolling back down here uh step or part c of the step is here is you want to calculate the modulus of elasticity okay modulus of elasticity how bendy is this thing and so to do that you're going to have to use you could click the need help it's just going to tell you to manipulate this equation to solve for e so we got our delta max is equal to F, which is the, the constant, the force, okay, in pounds. The L, which is L cubed, which is the beam span, which you can get by looking at, I can't think it tells you somewhere along the lines. Um, maybe this is it right here, 6.30 uh, inches. And it's going back down, um, 48. That's just a nice little number. E is what you're solving for. So this little E right here is going to be what you're solving for. So you'll rearrange the equation to solve for that. 
letter, that, that variable. Now, if you're not comfortable with that, you can certainly plug in all the numbers and do the calculations and then just solve for the leftover. Um, and then I is the moment of inertia, which you solve for in the previous step. So you have all the variables to solve for, and like it says here, you're gonna to wanna to manipulate the deflection formula to solve for E, so it's algebra. If you want help with that, please contact me, let me know if you're in my class. Okay, um, make sure all the measurements are consistent. In other words, use pounds and inches, okay, because you're gonna to wanna to pounds per square inch in the end. So to, let me slow down a second. You're going to get from the data file, you're gonna get a certain delta max. How far did it bend? Okay, that's from the that's from the data file. That's gonna be on the y-axis. Uh, let me go back to this. So in my example here, my delta max is 49.1. Okay, uh, 49.1. And um, oop, I just changed it to 53.1. And my, oh, I'm sorry, whoa, 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 that's the force. Okay, Newtons, look at the, so, the, the y-axis is the force. So see, this is why I showed you the example so it could be very clear here. So here's your force. You're gonna end up changing that to pounds. So if I go actually to 50, can't get quite, oh, oh there we go. So that's, the, that's what I told Siri. Um, and the delta max here is 3.403 millimeters, which you will need to convert into uh, inches. Okay, once again, you could do that manually or, or look it up or ask your phone. Okay, so then you're gonna come, so this delta max is what you converted from millimeters. It's how far the, uh, the data file said it went with the certain amount of F, the certain amount of force, which you'll have in, uh, it's given to you in Newtons and you'll have to convert that into pounds. Okay, if that's still not clear, just let me know or somebody know, okay? So then it talks about how wood is not homogeneous, meaning that it's just something that's grown. It's uh, modulus for a species of wood can vary. So uh, there are accepted modul moduli of elasticity, well, moduluses of elasticity. Uh, and you could Google any of this. Um, and these are accepted for different woods like red oak, uh, different materials like steel, concrete, aluminum. That's what this capital E is, the uh, modulus of elasticity for different woods. I'm guessing that we didn't use red oak here, so you won't probably will not get this answer, just so you know. Step five, so you're gonna write down determining beam deflection in your engineering notebook, step five. Okay, so you have calculated modulus of elasticity for this piece of wood. So what you're gonna do now is predict the maximum, the delta max deflection of a beam of the same size and shape using the experiments, but oriented vertically, you're gonna orient it like this, which means that the moment of inertia will be different. Okay, so, so you need help, click on that. So what you're gonna do is write down the applicable formula. So applicable formula is gonna be this equation right here, the delta max. Substitute the known va values, simplify and solve, make sure your units, your units are consistent. So you can use all the same numbers that we used before. You, you solved for the modulus of elasticity. You use, you're going to use the same wood. The only thing that's different now is you've, tilt, you've reoriented the, the piece of wood. Instead of being flat, look at this picture here, it's flat. It's gonna be oriented like this, okay? So, in other words, you take the same dimensions, but now you flip it. So the base has now become the height, and the height has now become the base, okay, when you do the modulus of elasticity. Um, then, step six. You're going to estimate the deflection of the beam oriented like a joist, like this. But instead of being made of the wood that you used, you're gonna use red oak instead which means your modulus of elasticity is gonna be different again, or in this case. So in step five, the, um, the moment of inertia changed, but you use the modulus of elasticity that you calculated from uh, step four. In step six, you're gonna use the same moment of inertia from step five, but now you're gonna use the modulus of elasticity for red oak, which is just right here. Boink. All right, that's the modulus of elasticity. Okay. All right, fine. 
that's the modulus of elasticity for oak, red oak. So you're going to use that with this moment of inertia and everything else is the same. Okay. Step. Okay, now we're getting the practice problem. So that, that was the so-called um, activity, all right, the simulated activity, which in class we would have done. It, I mean, you stand on a board and you do some measurements. It's, it's a little bit more exciting than watching the video, but, uh, you know, don't feel too bad. You didn't miss too much, although it's kind of cool. Like, I don't know. It, it is what it is. Practice problems. So you have a few of these to do. So you're going to copy this chart into your PLTW notebook. Pra under practice problems, still the same, you know, setup. Practice problems, step seven. Um, it tells you the moment uh, you're going to calculate the cross sectional area, the moment of inertia, and the maximum de beam deflection. You're uh, given a mid span load of 255 pounds, which means somebody's just standing right in the middle of this thing. A modulus of elasticity of this. Um, don't worry about this. This is just, I don't know why they threw that in there. Okay, don't do not worry about the kill of. This one, just here's the pounds per square inch. Okay, you want pounds per square inch, it's this one. So ignore the little thing in the parentheses. Okay, in a span of 12 feet. So the span is 12 foot like in the diagram here. Okay, and then you get these these diagrams, um, two by six, two by eight, two by 10. Okay, some common things you could buy at the at the home center um, to, to make things with, to use as joists and, and beams and stuff like that. So this is actual real engineering here. You're actually doing actual calculations, which is kind of cool. Um, and if you ever like built a deck or help frame something, you'll understand a little bit more about what goes into that, which again is, I think, really cool. Okay. Um, step eight, and we'll talk about that in class uh, a little bit. So this is just using a simulation uh, online. S then designing for deflection. This whole section we're going to talk about in class a little bit. I'll, I'll talk about that. And then of course there are two conclusion questions to answer and then you are done. Make sure you um, X out any big white spaces in your engineering notebook. Make sure you sign and date on the bottom and everything. And then when you're done, show me, take a picture, however you wanna do it, however you've been doing it. And I mean, this stuff is really cool, I think, is I really hope you enjoy this or at least you learn something here. All right, take care and have a good one.